homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Today we are making a pork vindaloo. And I am particularly interested in making this vindaloo because the recipe calls for cashmere peppers. And I grew cashmere peppers last year in my garden. And there's a bit of a story there. The cashmere pepper seeds actually came from a friend of mine, old high school friend who has since moved to England. I was unable to find any cashmere pepper seeds in the United States and found several places in the UK that carried them and asked him if he would order them and then just throw them in the mail to me, which he did. So that was very exciting to grow them. Kashmir is actually a region in India and Pakistan. And so there are many different kinds of Kashmir peppers, just like there are many different kinds of paprika peppers. And so if you're ordering Kashmir peppers from online sources, you really need to pay attention to how hot they are and read the reviews and then also taste it when you get it. This recipe comes from America's Test Kitchen. Um, I think it's a Cook's Illustrated recipe and the comments on it are a lot of people who ordered Kashmir peppers from online found out that the Kashmir peppers that they got were way hotter than the ones that were used in the recipe that Cook's Illustrated did. And so be sure to taste your your cashmere dried peppers and scale back on the heat level if you are not um, somebody who can take heat and your peppers taste particularly hot. This is a pork shoulder and I have a lot of these. I buy a, a half a pig every year and so I've had a lot of them and so I just thought I'd show you how that gets broken down. The trick with pork shoulder is it's a very funky bone in there and so it can be a little difficult to, to cut around but you eventually get there. Here's the cashmere peppers getting chopped up. And I didn't bother taking the seeds out of these. These were a really nice fruity pepper without a ton of heat. And so I just left the seeds mostly in because it was really fiddly to pick them out. You need some garlic, of course. And what we're gonna do here is basically make a chili paste that we're gonna braise it in. And so fresh garlic, uh, well, not so fresh now, it's, it's February, but garlic from the garden. And I'm picking out um, some of the sprouts on here. You can leave them in or not, it's totally up to you. Um, I kind of go both ways depending on my mood. They can be a little bit bitter, but in a recipe this heavily flavored, it's probably not gonna make a difference. Need a half a cup of water into the blender. Some ginger, I believe two inches of ginger. I always love how they give you a length and don't give you a width because ginger varies a lot in terms of how thick it is. And then I needed three tablespoons of the cashmere pepper and I had just about that and so I ended up just throwing it all in here because I didn't want to have this little, you know, half a teaspoon left over so I just threw it all into the batch. All of your garlic and ginger. And then a whole bunch of spices. This is a tablespoon of homemade homegrown paprika, some cumin, some salt, of course, a couple teaspoons of table salt, black pepper. This is a little bit of cayenne. You could leave that out. It's optional for a little extra spice. Some cinnamon, some cardamom. I make a lot of chai, and so I always have cardamom on hand, and so I just grind it myself from the pods. I pick the seeds out and grind it. And then a little bit of clove. And then I can't remember, I think this one is nutmeg. And then we're gonna just blend that up and reconstitute those pe peppers and make a nice paste. That all gets dumped onto our pork. Beautiful, beautiful cashmere pepper paste. Stir that all together. And then this is a really simple recipe in that you don't have to brown the meat before you braise it. You do need to saute the onions, however. So a couple tablespoons here of, this was grapeseed oil, you could use olive oil. I'm using a red onion just because I happen to grow a lot more red onions than yellow onions last year, and so I have a lot more of them in storage. This definitely doesn't call for a red onion. I'm just trying to work my way through them. 
I'm gonna saute those until they're translucent and lightly cooked, so probably five or seven minutes, depending on your stove. Stir everything together. No added liquid to this. This pork is gonna release a lot of liquid, and so you don't need to add any extra. This smells amazing. Let that come to a full simmer so that everything is good and hot. Put the lid on and into the oven it goes. 325 for about 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, we're gonna wanna add some acidity to this recipe. The original recipe called for coconut vinegar. I wasn't gonna go out and order coconut vinegar when I knew I wasn't gonna use it for anything else. They gave apple cider vinegar as the alternative and that's what I ended up using. This is third cup of apple cider vinegar. You stir that in. So this is gonna give this a little bit of acidity and tang but they said not to add it at the beginning because the acid made the meat too soggy if you add it at the beginning. And back in it goes without the cover for another 20 or 30 minutes. You want your meat to be nice and tender. I'm testing it here to make sure. You guys, this recipe is absolutely delicious and really easy because all you really need to do is make the chili paste. Give it a try. Thanks for watching, tribe. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe. We have new content coming out every week.